guys, good evening. Um, howdy from Spain. Uh, I hope you're all doing well and uh, sort of making the most of this lockdown, which I know is really weird. I've been talking to a lot of my mates and they're just like freaking out about it. I'm, I mean, it's like a movie, I guess. Um, right, so what I would like to do my now very good friend Pippa Campbell who has helped me sort of navigate my DNA and maintain my optimal weight. There she is. Hi everyone. How are you? Oh let me angle myself a bit better. You look nice. It's fake tan. Got some fake tan on. Or is it because I told you I burnt myself yesterday? <laughs> no but yeah I re realized last week you were looking so gorgeous and brown and I was looking so pale so I just whacked on the fake tan Whack on the f which which fake tan do you use actually oh god I don't it's my daughter's no idea <laughs> but it's just quite natural um I can't remember the name or Sonia or something I use for the body but this is my daughter's yes, yes that's Sonia one yeah I know and that. since I've been in lock-in I've discovered I've worked out how to use the Dyson no not Dyson yes the Dyson hair dryer the one that does the, the hair dryer <laughs> We're all figuring out our stuff, aren't we? I know. Okay. Anyway, so um, this is this chat. I think is going to take us quite a while because um, we normally chat for half an hour. But I think let's dedicate an hour to weight loss because let's face it, we live in the Western world. We're surrounded by abundance, surrounded by temptation, constant stressors. Whether you think it's stressful or not, if, if it is stressing you, it's stressing you, and that's the end of it. So we can't compare and despair with everybody else's level of stress. If you're stressed, that's affecting your chemical body, and it's going to affect how you metabolize food or how you store it, etc., etc., etc. So we've got quite a list of questions to get through. Yeah. So I thought what I'd do is, rather than us just chatting, we'd fire through these so everybody yeah. who wrote into us has got their questions answered. I'm, again, I said I'm not going to read out anyone's names so we can stay totally anonymous because most of these will affect most people who follow you and I anyway. Yeah. So let's just crack on with it. Can I okay. just say, yeah, can I yes. just say, so, I mean, um, you know, I absolutely sympathize with everyone. Um, most of my clients, I say 80% of my clients come to see me about weight loss. So this is something I specialize in. Uh, most of my clients are female in their 30s, 40s, 50s, predominantly in their 40s. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of people affected by sort of hormonal changes as well. Um, I would love to say weight loss is really simple. Sometimes it is, but quite often it isn't. And that's why we've got all these questions here, because obviously people are not finding it that easy. Um, I do have various programs, um, which we'll talk about at the end. Um, but yes, yeah, I want so to we'll ask just... you about one of your programs, actually. Okay. Be dead cheeky. And ask Get dead, it's fine. Um, so if you can, try and calculate in your head what sort of right. discount you can give my followers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start working out. You've got today. an hour to figure um, it out. <laughs> yeah, so I have different programs. I have so my high-end program, which is my three-month metabolic program, which involves blood tests and DNA testing. I've got my 21-day plan and seven-day plan. So I do a lot of genetic testing as well, which can be very useful for working out um, underlying factors why people can't lose weight. But um, yeah, let's crack on because we've got tons of questions here. We can always carry it over to another day, but... Um, I really want to answer. There's so many, so many of you out there that um, I'd really like to help. So, and do you know let's what? I give it a hate, go. If I hate that when you go to your doctor and you're clearly obese, because I mean I've been obese, and they just tell you to moderate, eat a healthy diet, and exercise regularly. That's yeah, what I, I know. And because, well, one, you know. One, you can't, I, I, I can't get out of bed. Exercise I a bad diet, but... I, I managed to get out of bed to ask you to help me, and you're going to tell me something that I can find yes. in woman's own. Thanks. Exactly. No, thanks. You know what? If it was as if it was as easy as just putting less in your mouth, I wouldn't have a job. You know, I mean, it's very frustrating. I've heard that before. I've heard, um, hate to say it, but it's usually men who say it. Um, they say just, you know, if you just eat less, then you, you'll lose weight. It's not that, it's really not that no. simple. No, you actually just get um, and depressed. So Yeah, as we can see, right. some of these questions, people have tried that. So, um, okay, yeah, so right. just kick off to Vinya. Let's crack on. Okay, so, first of all, help. I'm an emotional eater, and I'm doing so in lockdown. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of my clients have, um, I've, you know, the last week or so, 
have definitely either sort of fallen off or sort of temporarily fallen off. And I think emotional eating, um, it can be various things. So it could be literally just the distress and anxiety around this lockdown, not knowing what's going to happen. Um, and then I think there's just that boredom eating as well, which comes into it. You're, you're at home, you're near the fridge. People quite often find that they can work when they're in the office um, and it, food can be quite functional, but it's when they're at home, when they're near the fridge, when they're in the cupboards and just keep open cupboards. So it's not always, you're not hungry. You're yeah. just looking for something to comfort you. And that, that's the hard thing, especially if you've got young children and you might have some of these things in the house. I mean, I'd love to say, just get it all out the house, but that's not practical, is it? Um, no, particularly when kids are nagging and I, yeah. I'm, I'm guilty of it. There's a lot of bribery in this house at the moment and it tends to be around food, which is the worst thing. But if I you're know. locked in, you've got nothing to, but you can't say, right, I'll take you to uh, play football. I'll take you to the zoo. I'll you can't do that because it's not on our trajectory yeah. for the moment, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, and there's only so much like games you can play, you know, and I'm a bit over it. So, I mean, apart from like monetary bribery, which my kids aren't old enough to understand, <laughs> I mean, I, I am down to like, okay, but what I'm doing right now, I'm making jelly with them. With oh yeah, that's good, and you're making it with fruit. Yeah, with fresh fruit and um, like just fresh apple juice and some Planet Paleo organic um, grass-fed gelatine, and yeah, they yeah. think that's great. And I'm whacking a bit of whipped cream on yeah. it that I've whipped up myself, and they think it's like a trifle. And it takes ages to do, and it sets. It's not like hours. It sets in a couple of you know, it's not an overnight thing. So it sets in a couple of hours, and they're kind of enjoying the jelly. But that's wearing thin. But so going back to yeah. the mum, how yes, do you mom, come no, that's the hard with... thing. So you have to, you definitely have to have a lot of resilience here. Um, and I think addressing underlying issues is key. So if you are anxious, then I'd definitely be looking at tackling the anxiety and the stress. Um, you know, and the thing is, is that we know it's like a vicious circle because when you're eating better, you're feeling better and then you're feeling stronger to carry on feeling better. So it is a bit of a vicious circle. So you've got to start somewhere. And I think having some really strict rules, right? You say, OK, that's it. I'm eating three meals a day. I am not snacking. Absolutely. I mean, for me, that is one of the top things. No snacking. So everyone just stop this snacking. OK, uh, we are not cows. We are not made to graze. So get the snacking out. Um, um, just to remind we, people that yeah. Kellogg's invented that. Kellogg's invented the little and often mantra that you always have to keep your blood sugar levels up. That's bollocks. That makes them sell more snacks. It makes you become a slave to your insulin peaks and troughs because you're yeah. as soon as you finish one snack, half an hour later, your insulin's dropping and you've got that hunger again or that yeah. picky want some more. So if you get out that, I mean, these guys are multi-billionaires because of that, that little bit of marketing. So don't be a slave to them. Don't put money in a huge, big yeah, they're training you like snack. Kellogg's or Nestle yeah. or whatever. They're, they're just scumbags, you know, they're just drug dealers really. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, so, um, yeah, sugar in any form is actually um, eight times more addictive than cocaine. Interesting fact there. Um, yeah. But, yes, coming back to sort of that snacking, that's true. Yeah, apparently eight times more addictive than cocaine. So it, it is a drug. Which it is a problem. Addictive. Yeah, very addictive. So, um, yeah, every time you eat, now, every, now, obviously, it depends on what you're eating, but every time you eat, you will release insulin. So, Every time you snack, you release insulin. So we don't Can you want to explain what insulin and... is because it's a hormone. But yeah, what, we just what call does it... insulin actually do? Where does it come well, from? It balances and how is it blood sugars. To weight gain? Yeah, so it's balancing balances blood sugars, but it is nicknamed the sort of fat hormone because we have too much insulin, then it gets pushed into our cells and we sort of gain fat. Now we should only really have now circulating about one teaspoon of sugar in our blood. So if you think one teaspoon of sugar is equivalent to one grape because it's very high in sugars. So when you think of it like that, actually, um, that's why even excessive fruit um, eating is is not a good thing. Um, now, for some people who do have a problem with blood sugars, because I did notice there was someone here in one of the questions, I'm jumping ahead, somebody who said well, they found fasting, they got really shaky, nauseous, migraines. Yeah. This is someone who probably has a problem with blood sugars. So what I would say is maybe to start with, you have your three meals with protein, and then maybe mid-morning, mid-afternoon, a small protein snack. So it could be a handful of almonds or something like that. 
And then you want to wean yourself off that mid-morning and mid-afternoon snack, okay? If you wake up in the morning and you're very shaky, it might mean you need a little bit of protein and carbohydrate before bed. But, you know, I mean, a small amount like peanut butter and a little cracker. And again, then you want to wean yourself off that. So that is a sign if you are sort of shaky that you've got imbalanced blood sugars. Um, and you can train yourself out of it, can't you? Absolutely. I, mean, I used you're to. Not I used to have a problem. If you're not born no, no. with it. You've probably trained yourself into it. Yeah, of course you can. I mean, that was one me in my twenties. I, I, if I didn't get a meal, I'd be shaky and and grumpy. I was, you know, just really, really irritable. You can absolutely retrain yourself, but it's by eating the right foods. And I think you have to get down the carbohydrates. I'm not saying cut them all out. Um, but you have to get down the carbohydrates and you have to have sufficient protein at each meal. And I see breakfast and lunch, very common women are not eating enough protein. In the morning, they might be grabbing some toast, spiking insulin there. Yeah, well, no wonder mid-morning. Or granola. Hungry granola. Again. Everyone thinks that. Like, I know. I'm animals. sorry, it's everyone. It's but... healthy because it's vegan. It's going to yeah. spike the hell out of your insulin yeah. and you're going to be hungry again by 11 yeah. o'clock now if you wanted to make a homemade granola that wasn't sort of sweet and it just you know i mean if you put nut butter and nuts in it, i've got some on my website um then you know that's fine as long as you know you might want to have some protein powder or something with it but you know things like eggs are a really good breakfast or you can use some protein powders um but absolutely i think a lot of women aren't getting enough protein at breakfast and then you know you'll find that mid-morning you'll be crashing quite often actually it's what you eat for breakfast that affects your energy levels about three o'clock in the afternoon and that's another common sign um time for sort of crashing um you know big sandwich at lunchtime you know i mean i'd feel really i'd want to go to sleep if i had a big sandwich so just just make sure you are getting enough protein and keeping those starchy carbohydrates down. So meat as well. You can have meat in yep. the morning, can't you? Yeah. Absolutely. Why not? I mean, there are no I, I, I don't have what breakfast can eat. very often. But my first meal of the day is generally scrambled eggs, avocado and smoked salmon with some lemon yep. on top, loads of salt and pepper. And that's what I had at four o'clock this afternoon. So basically, I moved brunch, well, breakfast, right the way till four o'clock because I'm, you know, that's what I do. But just getting yeah. on to stress. Obviously... Yes. I've read, obviously I've read tons of books on, on, on this subject, but I've read that when I say, if I have an argument with someone or I've been on the phone to, I don't know, say ex-husband, lawyer, whatever, someone's just rattled my cage, I will instinctively slam the phone down, walk to the fridge, open yeah. the fridge and do this while shouting my head off at whatever poor person's in my company and I'll start stuff in my face. And I'm thinking, yeah, what is that? Well, apparently, that is, as soon as you start digesting, because you're in a cortisol level, you suddenly, you digest, and then you pump out, as you digest, you pump out serotonin, which is the happy contentment yeah. hormone. And that's why we all sort of crave food when we're stressed. Yeah. So, my, so I, I didn't know that, but that gives me a sort of element mm. of power, thinking, okay, I'm storming, I'm raging and i'm storming to the fridge and i've opened the fridge now i'm not actually hungry i'm just trying to biohack myself yeah i'm trying to literally hack into my hormones to bring myself down to a point where i can think calmly yeah. so basically what i've started doing now is taking some i don't like solgar but i've started taking rhodiola yeah the sort of because i'm pretty cortisol -y. You know, as a person, yeah. I react. Yeah, you're I don't quite act, cortisol and uh, quite dopamine sort of driven. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very, very driven. And I basically, so I'm, I'm taking quite a lot of this in this stressful situation with having the kids. I mean, one of them's just cracked his head on the floor, you know, so I'm, whoa, who pushed him, you know, straight away. Yeah. So I'm taking quite a lot of rodeo. I, I wouldn't normally take this when the kids are at school, but I'm just trying to stay on, on track with my it's diet. At the moment, yeah. But I am supporting myself by hacking my hormones, bringing that cortisol level down throughout the day so I don't go into that rage and then just run to the yeah. kitchen and just warm. There's you know, an yeah, adaptogenic, so you've got like, it's a, adaptogenic herbs are really useful for balancing um, your adrenals. So, you know, things like, um, yeah, ashwagandha, I think is very, very good. Um, so I, a holy basil, so ashwagandha in particular, I think people get on really well with that. And it really sort of just balances your adrenals. So whether you're already high, really low, then I think it just sort of balances that. Um, particularly That's why for it's people, adapt to drink. It adapts yeah. if you're high and it brings you down. Yeah. And it adapts if you're low 
it'll bring you up. Yeah. Without making you either or. So yeah, it's, I, and I, I think that's a really good one. It, you know, because obviously it varies. Some people, you might have low cortisol, but then you could like have this explosion where you have the stress. Now, obviously, in ideally, as you're doing, you want to preempt it so you don't get that massive exactly. stress. Exactly. So you're so that's already what I'm there. Doing. I'm trying to it. preempt it by taking, I'm taking yes. rhodiola, so I'm taking it. I'm kind of okay with my stress in the morning because I'm in cortisol and I'm, you know, I'm doing the breakfast and I'm organizing the day and I'm doing printouts for the kids and then I'm going to hit the gym. It's after then, it's after yes. I've done all my routine. That's when I get angsty. So I'm taking it as soon as I've, yeah. I'm, t I'm actually taking, when I'm going into the gym, I'm taking this game on, which is a bit yes. of a, it, it does help you with your exercise. It helps you with, um, it's got caffeine in, but it's also got L-theanine, but it does have, it also has rhodiola in it. But I'm taking on top of this to get me through the workout, I'm taking yes. extra rhodiola when I come out of the gym. So I'm, t I'm, I'm popping pills. Yes, yeah, so you've got your height. And you get on really well with that supplement. There are some people who, I mean, I think a lot, you know, some people might, but I think because it's got caffeine in it, if you're really caffeine sensitive, you don't want to take it. It's got lion's mane, I think, in it as well. So if you do have an issue with um, mushrooms, if you've got candida, perhaps, if you've got um, intolerance to mushrooms. So I think there are some really, really good ingredients in that supplement, but I think just make sure people should always have a look at ingredients and just check Absolutely. that they couldn't get on with them. The packaging. And maybe it's, you know, it might be a supplement that um, you don't want to take, you know, after two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, you know, so you're, you're taking it, you know, you've worked out it works really well for you and you're taking it at the right time. So and I think with yeah. all supplements, you know, what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for someone else. But I think it's sometimes you just got to try these things like, ashwagandha doesn't really impact me that much doesn't sort of make much of a difference but for my husband it does actually really he really he thinks it's a great supplement so um i like maca somewhere i've got got the maca i haven't got it in here yeah so i really like maca because i'm sort of more of a probably lower cortisol person so i think maca helps oh somebody uh, just me mentioned actually that they don't produce cortisol that they have to take it synthetically what would right. you do with with them well, if they have to take it synthetically, obviously you have to be careful sort of interfering with um, medication, but they're the sort of people that want to bring their cortisol up. And a lot of women, I'd say in their 40s, by the time they sort of got to sort of late 40s now, sometimes they've gone through the really high cortisol stage where their adrenals are pumping it out. You know, they're like running for that bore or running away from that bore. And then they, they, the adrenals are said, hang on a minute, I've had enough. And then yeah. they sort of like towards menopause, you know, so the ovaries are sort of, producing you know less female sex hormones and then the adrenals have to take over and they go hang on god i can't do all of this so then the adrenals get a bit knackered and say can't do this anymore and they don't produce enough cortisol so then you quite can see a pattern of lower cortisol uh, particularly in the morning so if you you're the so that means you can't get a bit out of bed. dizzy or yeah, can't get out of bed, you're sleeping a lot, or, um, well, or, you know, when I say sleeping a lot, you still can get sleep interruptions, but perhaps just feel tired in the morning. Um, light, somebody who might feel a bit lightheaded, um, they might be sort of more lower cortisol. So that's where we want to sort of bring it up. I think B vitamins can be good. St um, Stabilium. Stabilium is great for, well, uh, probably for anyone, really. Um, I find most people get on with that. Stabilium 200, which balances cortisol. That's the one the Romans used to take. Can you just explain Stabilium to everybody, please? Because yeah. that's one that everyone can take. It's a really interesting one. And then we'll actually problem. get on to question two. Yeah, yeah, we'll get on. Right. <laughs> okay, Stabilium. Um, it's, an, um, it's, it's actually, it's, well, it's the oldest supplement there is. It's from Brittany Fish, but it's not a fish oil. And um, it really helps balance cortisol. So I find it really useful if I don't have an adrenal test, so like a cortisol test, so I don't know somebody's levels. I find it very good for energy, um, for times of um, emotional and physical stress. I think it's a really good supplement. So just say I have put a link in my bio. Um, there's a company that I work with called NutriLink. Um, I just quite like their supplements and you can register with them. There's a link um, in my bio, but, you know, head to their website, have a read, have a read of, um, of the blurb. It's really good. Anyway, yes, let's get on to. Yeah. And by the way, for everybody, I will post a list of all these supplements we're talking about. Don't worry. You'll, I'll, I'll do a sort of summary, a simple summary. And, and I'm going to try and like replay this somehow, like record it. 
I don't know what I'm doing with this. Scene. I think you might be able to save it after and then, gosh, I don't know, maybe save some of it as an IGTV, but um, it might be too Everybody's long. Everybody's like an 18-year-old kid who knows what they're doing. Can you just get a... Just get a website. Get a website and then stick it on that. Okay, <laughs> anyway, right. um, where, where's the next question? Let's have okay, look. how do I make a diet sustainable? Yeah, good question, because there are so many fad diets out there, um, yeah. which, you know, you could sort of like some people, not everyone, but lose a lot of weight initially, um, but they're not sustainable because they're quite often meal replacements and things like that. So I think to make it sustainable, you have to be eating real whole foods, okay? Because if you're not, then you're going to be depriving yourself. If you're just living on sort of packet foods and things like that, that's absolutely not sustainable. Quite often you'll lose a lot of muscle, but not Back, so then you put the weight back on straight away after okay you don't want to put yourself in starvation mode because again you could actually store fat it could work against you so i think just eating whole foods make sure you've got protein make sure you've got your vegetables make sure you've got your healthy fats if the meal has all of that small amounts of carbohydrate then you're eating normal food that will be sustainable don't deny yourself completely you might say once a week saturday night you're going to you know enjoy yourself, relax a bit, have a glass of wine, that makes it sustainable. Don't completely deprive yourself of everything. Okay, fantastic. Now then, big one here. How do I get rid of belly fat? Ha, huh, right, okay. Uh, I'll try to answer this in 10 seconds. This is a big answer, actually. Um, right, could be increased cortisol if you've got belly fat. Um, then also- Cortisol could be to fight or flight um, uh, yep. predicament that you're in. So yep. that means when you're- <laughs> Raging when you're running around, when you're just, I don't know, uh, reaching for stuff in the, in, in the fridge because you're trying to balance your hormones to make yourself You're feeling feel a bit calm. heart racy, perhaps. Heart racy, just yeah. rage, anger, yeah, gnarly. You could be in cortisol or have a little bit of cortisol in your body for the whole day. And yeah. you are, that, that is, and you can do a cortisol test, can't you? Yeah, there's a really nice, I mean, the Dutch test measures the um, female sex hormones as well, and that has cortisol in. So I love that. I love the Dutch urine test. But there is also a cheaper test that's about £86, pounds, which is an adrenal okay. panel, if you're just looking at the cortisol. And that's quite, you know, quite sort of quite a good price. So anyone can email me after if they want to know about this test. But I have also got link in my bio to, to most of these tests. Um, I don't sell the test. It's that you'd buy it directly with the lab. But then I um, will analyze the test and go through it with you so it's quite useful having a look at cortisol levels but yeah so your cortisol could be high that could be contributing to belly fat again we're talking about here look at the underlying factors um then we've also got an imbalance perhaps in your um estrogen pathways so without getting too sort of science you've got different pathways um protective pathways the 2oh pathway we can see in G dna testing which pathway you may favor. And if there's an imbalance in the ratio of these pathways, then um, it can affect estrogen, um, estrogen sort of detoxification, and this can, can increase belly fat. So estrogen is hugely important, especially when you're looking at sort of perimenopausal time as well. Let's, let's have a look at what's happening with estrogen. Um, you know, we've got to look at the underlying factors and address those. And what sort of foods increase in estrogen that we might think are healthy? Uh, so you see, do you mean increasing um, estrogen dominance or to help us with estrogen production? No, you, you know, like when, um, like estrogen, like soy, for example, like uh, soy okay. products, because they're in yeah. lots of vegan foods yeah. and it's a, um, it's a highly processed, Oh. Yeah, so soy, kind of more like soy, processed foods, obviously you've got to avoid those because it's like the soy proteins and, and things like that. So, so, I mean, some sort of fermented tofus and things like that can be quite good. They can work as a phytoestrogen, so that can be quite a good thing. But it's in the soy that's not organic, that's not fermented, it's processed, that they use as agents in these processed foods. Um, and also high insulin will suppress estrogen production. So, I mean, you've really got to be balancing your blood sugars. You've got to get the sort of sugar out of the diet because if you've got high insulin then you know you're not going to be producing enough e in, um, estrogen and remember carbohydrates are actually sugars so yep. when you do have that piece of brown toast it's full of sugar even yep. though you've not put honey or jam on it you think it's and you put cheese on it and it's savory it's still actually a sugar so is the granola so is yep. the croissant even though you didn't have it with jam or chocolate yep. or whatever everything you see that's like refined grains or grains will spike your insulin, it will behave like 
you know, a sugar. And that will be stored as fat. And most of that fat is going to be stored on your tummy. So, um, you know, I would love to say there was a magic pill, but, you know, supplements and things should be in addition to a healthy, balanced diet. So Ooh, I'd love to... Oh, speaking of magic pills, I'll show you what I've invested in because oh, this is what I do. <laughs> it's going to go what's she done So now? I, she bought, done? I bought this. This is called Keto Shield. Now, right. I don't have an opinion on it yet because right. I just test everything on myself. So this is meant to... Hang on. Look, she's going to roll her eyes at me now. Okay. This is meant to... Uh, a glucose inhibitor. So this will allow... Look at her face. But <laughs> if I don't uh, try it, I can't... Okay, what are the ingredients? Of... What are the ingredients? Hang on. I'm going to do that now. Have you got anything for <laughs> eyes? Okay, so we've got in here... Um, Florazine. Yeah. What else? That's it. Florazine. That's it. I probably pay 40 quid for fluorazine, 200 milligrams of it. Let me look into that. Send me the details of that product. Oh, no, I've got some gelatin. I've got some magnesium. I've got some silica, some micro silicine cellular. So what are the claims? What's it saying? So I'm just thinking, if this works, I'm going to speak to this company and just get us a job lot. Well, we'll have a look at it that. Well, I've tried every think, diet pill there is. But... Um, so I think, you know, obviously it's addressing all these underlying issues. So if you do have a problem with um, balancing blood sugar, so some people do, and you can see that in blood tests, yeah. absolutely we need to get the diet sorted. But on top of that, yes, there are some supplements that can help balance blood sugars. I particularly like a supplement called Gluco Balance, And it has various things in it. It has chromium, but it has other things as well. It have, has B vitamins, which help balance blood sugar. So it's like a nice little... Um, multi for balancing blood sugars. So I find sometimes with clients, they take one at each meal. It can help um, stop the sugar cravings, can help balance the blood sugars, but it's not a magic pill. It's its own. It's, you know, it's got to be on top of an already healthy diet. If you're going to take that and eat a bowl of pasta, forget it. It's, you know, it's not going to work. Um, but anyway, yes, next, um, what, what are we on next question? Um, okay, yeah, the perimenopause weight gain. What the hell can I do? Yeah, so same thing again. Um, I think we need to check out hormones as well. If you find that, um, you know, eating well, so protein each meal, not sacking, if you've done all of that and it's still not working, then absolutely we need to look at the hormonal imbalance. We need to check, are you detoxifying estrogen or is it just swimming back round? And then is it, you know, affecting the pathway, which also... Um, which then detoxify uh, thyroid as well. So it's very, very common for there to be um, a thyroid imbalance during perimenopause as well. So if there's underactive thyroid, um, get that checked, or we can look at sort of DNA testing as well, um, because that can be a problem. And quite often people who are on thyroxine, they've said they're on thyroxine, but still can't lose weight. Um, well, thyroxine is T4, you know, perhaps it's your conversion rate from T4 to T3, which is the active form of thyroid that we need to use. So if you've got a problem with the conversion, which we can often see in, in DNA testing, um, then we need to support that. OK, so it means that the thyroxine is kind of not doing its, its thing. You speak a different language to what my GP said. My 35 year old GP, male, by the way, who, you know, knew nothing about me. Ooh, anyway, I mean, some of some of the doctors are really, you know, on board with it, and they, you know, I, I've got. Some but how can they be? They've got people coming in amazing. with cancer. Do you know what I mean? They've got people coming in with all yeah. sorts of like traumas, yeah. as yeah. if they're gonna, like focus on me and my mental health when I'm just like a bit of an overweight woman with four kids. You know, I'm not yeah. the cue. But you and know, sometimes, sometimes it, it you know, um, somebody goes to the doctor, they're feeling really down, really depressed. Yeah, and quite often, you know, that is, you know, that is a real issue. But sometimes it's sometimes, you know, I said, I'm not a doctor here. I'm just saying that what can happen, I've seen. Sometimes um, it's actually been a thyroid issue, an undirected thyroid. So um, if, you, if anyone wants to email me, I've got a really nice um, sheet from the Institute of Functional Medicine about signs and symptoms for underactive thyroid. I think you'll be amazed at all the different symptoms there. I mean, constipation is one of them. I know that can be all sorts of things, sort of gut health as well. Um, feeling really hot and cold, um, loss of um, libido. So, you know, just no sex drive. 
Um, so they're also, and losing the outer third of eyebrow, that's another one, which another sort of symptom. But, you know, there's quite all sorts and feeling really low. So that, you know, though, you know, that brain fog as well. So um, if you are, you know, perimenopausal, you've had the sort of, um, you know, estrogen progesterone levels checked, get the thyroid checked as well. Don't, don't leave out things like that. So I think that, you know, uh, hormones work in harmony. It's like an orchestra. So if the violin isn't like doing its job and it's being really lazy and it's not sort of playing very well, it's going to have an effect on the rest of the orchestra. So hormones kind of work in balance. We need to look at all of them. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Tried the Cambridge diet, lost weight initially, <laughs> but then stopped losing it. Why? Ah, oh, yes, my favorite topic, fat diets. Okay, so I know it's like a really easy one to follow. You can buy the foods and then you sort of just have a normal meal in the evening, but it's not real food, guys. So um, look, it's, it's, you really, really need to be eating real food to be able to have a long-term weight loss. Sometimes people lose a lot of weight initially. Um, they're either starving themselves or it's just you know massively reducing calories but actually haven't started to burn fat stores and change the metabolism. And then you go back to eating normally and the weight just piles on. So I have a body composition. So for my clients that um, I see here in person, so I can't do it with my virtual clients, um, I can actually see how much um, body fat they're burning. And now you can buy these machines on, um, on Amazon. So the important thing is we want to see fat loss. And I, like, I, I talk about um, packs of butter. So I get really excited. So I say, my God, you, you've just lost four packs of butter in a week. And I'll get really excited. Um, but yeah, so that means you haven't probably been burning fat and you just maybe lost a lot of water and a lot of muscle. Okay. Do you need to eat sufficient protein? Otherwise, you'll be losing huge amounts of muscle. Okay, okay, right. I've actually, um, I got one of those uh, body composition scales for Christmas from Matthew. Okay. No, I've just, I've, I've just it out now. I'm just story. trying to, but I, I think, I think there's so much, I know, do you know what I mean? Um, because I'm actually going to, I'm going to put him on a diet. He's put a load of weight on. So now I've got him here. I'm going to make him my little project. Poor Matthew. <laughs> yeah, just once a week. Don't get him on those scales every day, poor guy. Once a week. I'm just, and also, well, yeah. does it? And it's all. It's all about. To be honest, it's all about the fat loss. Does it measure visceral fat? Your machine? I, no, I don't. I don't think so. It's just the Withings one that you get in the Apple shop. Okay. Okay. Because that's another. Christmas thing. Eve, you know. Okay. Because that's another thing. Is that hidden fat? And people are quite often surprised. Um, you know, I mean, it's that, so certainly the belly fat, you know, if there's excess belly fat, it's always good to check the visceral fat as well, because that's the fat around yeah. our organs, which is the unhealthy yeah. fat. Um, yeah. And I can see that on some of my machines, but... Um, I'll have a look, I'll, I'll see how good it is, actually, and then I'll put it up. If I recommend it, I'll yeah. put it up. You know, and yeah. we, I mean, the great things about is Amazon still working in the UK? Are they still delivering? Yeah. I'm okay, okay, well, it's probably a good time to invest, invest in a decent scale yeah. that will tell Tanita you. Tanita is a good brand. I mean, Which Tanita one? is a good brand. Uh, Tanita. Yes, Tanita, yeah, I've, I've actually got one of those. Yeah, um, I mean, mine is tops, you know, they're like... They're small, aren't they? Yeah. And you can get reasonable ones. I mean, mine's, you know, mine's cost like it's really five thousand pounds. I'm not suggesting anyone buy anything like that. I know, but it's an all single Talk about thing. pound loss. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know, but... It measures everything. I can even see people's metabolic age. You know, it's kind of got everything. But you can still get some very basic versions. So, um, okay, cool. right. Right, okay. It took me a whole six months just to lose a stone on Slimming World. And now it's all gone back on. Mm. Slimming World. Okay, so the same thing again. Um, what, what, you know, the ingredients. What are in these things? Probably a lot of sweeteners as well. Um, you know, the ingredients are not, not great. Is the probably, you know, sometimes the sort of chemical ingredients, um, uh, you might have aspartame and things like that in there. They can still, or even sometimes sugar actually is in there. So again, it's not actually going to help you sort of lose weight long term. You're not, you're not training your body, um, you know, with the right nutrients and to, the, you know, how to actually. And, and you've got to remember them. companies like Slimming World, Weight Watchers, Slim Fast even. They're all multi-billion pound industries. So they want you to lose weight quick, but they want you to put it back on and so come doing back doing. along with your two other mates because it worked last time. It's brilliant marketing. Just look at what Oprah Winfrey's been through. She's done every single diet, been the face of every single one of them, and she has ballooned and rocketed up and down. Yeah. 
The only diet that works for me, which I don't see as a diet now, is intermittent fasting because I'm an addict by nature. I'm addicted to sugar. I'm addicted to alcohol. I, you give me something and I'll be addicted to it within two seconds. I'll be addicted. I mean, I was addicted to those, what are the, um, barocas when I got sober. I was having like 10 a day, went up to 20 a day. Do you know what I mean? I want to get addicted to everything. And the only thing that stops me craving is a good amount of fat in the morning and then I intermittent mm. fat and my brain blocks it now. It blocks but then it. the I thing is the rest of the time, but the rest of the time your diet is also good. It's not just the intermittent fasting. So when you are eating, your diet is also good. So it's not like you can intermittent fast and then eat crap. You know, your diet is good and you've worked, you know, you've well, taken I mean, quite a lot of time. It was, this. but it's baby steps, isn't it? Because yeah. now I think I'm going to feel really crap if I have that. Now I've got the, I've got the pause button. Which initially, like when I'd given up alcohol, I didn't have the pause button. But now I do. And now I have a stop button. But it just yeah. takes you those little... So don't all of a sudden think, right, I'm going to fast for 12 hours. And then I'm just going to have like lean, beautiful meats and organic vegetables. And then I'm going to go to bed. No, you're still going to have that emotional memory that, do you know what? I fancy some chocolate. Well, go for it. Because you have actually fasted and given your body a bit of a break from digesting for 12 to 16 hours in a day. So don't beat yourself up because you're not a ninja on it, but it just takes time. I mean, it'll take you probably about three weeks to get into the flow, but what's three weeks out of like 30 years of dieting? Anyway, yeah. I digress. I've got to stop yeah. this, right. Okay, supplements. Yes. <laughs> what supplements will help me with weight loss, please? And how do I sh stop sugar cravings? Ooh. Right. Okay. Well, I talked about the supplement glucobalance, which can help with sugar cravings. But again, as I said, this is on top of a good diet already. Um, eating protein at each meal, helping to balance those blood sugars. Um, but yes, there are some things on top that can help. But as I said, this is on top of a good diet. Um, we talked about this one last time, phosphatidylcholine, which is a fat emulsifier. Good for brain, liver, Got it here. cell membranes. Yeah, we like this one. So that is a fat emulsifier. So that can really help with, with fat so loss on fat, top of a good fat diet. fat emulsifier, that yeah, helps you, break down. breaks down fat and what, poo yeah. it out? Because yeah, well, you've done my DNA, you've looked at yeah. my DNA. And I, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on what generation you were born in, I store fat and I store sugar. Now, 200 years ago, that would have been great. I would have survived a famine. We are yeah. not in a famine. We're in a lockdown, surrounded by <laughs> abundance of sugary food. This yeah. isn't good for me. So this is helping what fat and sh fat I eat. Yeah. It's helping me metabolize it, break it down, and poo out the excess. And yeah. this is by the Allergy Research Group. Yeah. And you get that in Nutralink. Yeah. Because so remember, this is, really good this is pretty new to me. It's called yeah. phosph phosphatidylcholine. <laughs> but don't worry, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put all the links up anyway. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. really happy with that, actually. And it helps with, uh, like, sort of, like, cellulite. Yeah, cellulite. And actually, it's a kind of, like, a nice sort of, it helps things like brain fog as well, because it's good for yes. brain and liver. So it's, it is a lovely supplement. Um, but I also think there's, you know, you were talking about... Um, were you talking about pooing it out, or am I just got poo on the brain? No, I, I, I always talk about poo. There's some yeah, serious so I problem do, with it. Yeah, do I do too? I talk about poo. Right, so we need to make sure everyone's bowels are moving well, because if not, that's how the stocks, uh, toxins will be recirculating. So we want daily bowel movement. Um, and we were talking about how sort of fat and things leaves um, the body sort of by bile. Now, Bisa Plus, it's not not necessarily recommended for everyone. Um, I take it because I do need bile support. Um, but that can help form a nice healthy stool especially if you especially if you don't have a gallbladder that's a really good supplement you don't Ooh, have a, gallbladder. a question about gallbladder yeah this this i recommend this to all my clients who don't have a gallbladder because this is bile and if you don't have a gallbladder you've got nowhere to store your store your bile and it's just going to get dumped you can sometimes i'd have diarrhea you could i'd have constipation um but yeah this is where gut health comes in really important because if you are not pooing every day um, if you're not eating sufficient fiber and, and um, with bile support as well, then you, your toxins are just going to be swimming back round again. You're not going to lose weight then. And I, I often see clients who um, are constipated or have become constipated, perhaps eating not enough fiber, not drinking enough water, and they become constipated and then their weight loss can slow down. So um, we do need to, we need to get it out there. So that's why it's important to look at gut health and all the reasons, because it's very complicated why somebody is constipated could be underactive thyroid could be the gut could have bad gut bacteria 
Um, and if you've got bad gut bacteria, um, a very simple, this, I mean, this is a really simple way of sort of knowing whether you might or might not, and I'm not saying this every time, but if your fart smell, there might well be some bad bacteria. If your farts smell a lot, every time, you know, smelly farts. Okay, so everyone going like that to their husband. <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah, so I, we I smell I'm... like roses. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I, think, I mean, that's so, a very simple sort of form. It's a bit, there's a bit more to it than that. But yeah, so we need to make sure we spot bar food. Another good supplement, now this is something I've been taking actually, and I found it very good for my skin. Um, but we're talking about sort of fish oils we've been good for sort of anti um like you know as an anti-inflammatory so these are called omega phytocan so you've got your um you've got gla you've got your epa dha so it's like you see so you've got your omega 3s there um but it's got phytocannabinoids in as well so this is sort of plant source now we know that eating oily fish is good OK, yeah. um, ideally, we want to get it from our diet if we can. Not everyone likes oily fish. Um, I like people, if people are going to take fish oils, if they need it, if they need fish oils, I would probably say maybe just take it three times a week or as often as you should be eating oily fish. You don't want to overdo the omega threes. You want to have a nice balance. Um, I think too much can become toxic. So maybe three times a week. But this is something you can sort of take every day because it's actually it's almost like the whole fish. So I think because you do get more benefits from eating the whole fish. Um, so that's why I think encourage people to try and eat sardines, mackerel, salmon, anchovies and things like that. I really like this supplement. I find it very good for helping with the metabolism as well. So that's another one. Um, and then other things, again, I say supplements for, um, for losing weight. I think if you need thyroid support, then if you need that conversion from T4 to T3, then there are supplements to help that as well. I'm not going to mention that now because I really don't want people um, going in and buying those kind of supplements when they don't need them. So I think that needs to be done um, really with sort of proper advice from a practitioner. Um, should we move on to another question? Yeah, so I just wanted to mention about yeah. sugar cravings. So oh, every yeah. morning I wake up and straight away, my memory of like growing up in the 80s, I crave either porridge or uh, Weetabix or croissants or toast because that's what I always had. And straight away, obviously that's sugar for anybody who doesn't realise it. That is just sugar. So what I do, even before I make the kids food, is make myself a bulletproof coffee. Now the fat, the MCT oil in that fat and a drop of stevia, which doesn't spike my insulin, takes that craving away. And as long as I have that in place, I won't be snacky, snacky, snacky all the way till 12 o'clock, making myself not feel like going to the gym. Um, so um, yeah, basically that's what I do to uh, mitigate that particular moment in my life when I do crave sugar. There is another one. Um, uh, what is it, that stuff that I put under my tongue? Um, gluta, oh, help me, Pippa. Um, glutamate. You, glutamate. You, take, you take glutamate. You find that works for you. Glutamate. Yes, it's a powder. It doesn't taste like sugar, so don't, don't think it's, it, it's, it's, it's a, like a sugary substitute. But basically, it's, a, it's an amino uh, acid, and you put it under your tongue, and um, basically you leave it there for 30 seconds and it must just absorb into your bloodstream straight away and take away that, I don't know what it does, it does something mm. chemical and, and it gives you that pause to make a cup of coffee or to make a better decision or to get, grab a piece of salmon or something like that that takes away that instant gratification from mm. having sugar straight away so that's in one of my posts actually if, if somebody just said how to yeah yeah you did mention once and i think it's very common for people i mean that is the time you think you've got like, when you're just starting out yeah. you've, you've got a whole night without food place. you know you, you've it's like whole night having a direct gun when you've given up cigarettes you know i mean yeah. when i gave up alcohol if they had a substitute drink i would have taken it there isn't anything for alcohol mm. unfortunately but with sugar with cigarettes, with nicotine, there are little strategies you can put in place yes. to help that cold turkey be a lot easier. Yeah, and I think the mornings are a very common time because your blood sugars, in you my, know, you've uh, got a whole night without food, your blood sugars have dropped. Sorry? 
Um, that's, you know, in the morning, you've gone the whole night without food, so blood sugars can drop. So, um, yeah, of you know, course, something... because you are in a fasted state when you're sleeping. Yeah. I just that, that I just take advantage of that. And yeah, on. and for some people who aren't ready for that sort of fasting stage yet, I do find things like even straight away soon when you get up, just maybe a couple of scoops of whey, mix whey protein powder mixed into water as well, can really support those blood sugars first thing in the morning. You know, perhaps those people who do have um, blood sugar imbalances, then um, you need to actually start with three good meals of protein a day, first of all. Then balance your blood sugars first, then start the fasting, I think. You could try that after. Um, Someone's just saying, is milky coffee okay in the morning? No, milk is going to take you out of a fasted state. If you yeah. want to do intermittent fasting, milk's got sugar in. So, no. Yes. I, that's why I use oil. And you whiz it up and you blend it, and it's just like... It's just like I mean, having a really nice cappuccino. Yeah, I mean, technically, anything, any calories are going to take you out of a fast. But where Bullet Coffee is clever is that it, you are still you're still achieving autophagy. So you're still in yeah. autophagy, so that clean up and repair mode. So you're not technically uh, in a fasted state anymore, but you are achieving autophagy. So it's just a, it's Which a is the whole point of a, the whole reason why I fast yeah. or get myself into a fasted state is to achieve, achieve autophagy, which yeah. is like a, a cleanup of all your cells. And, and that's when you your digestion a long time to rest. Yeah. And basically, I've always had problems with my gut. I think most of us have. We Most of us have all had 80s, 90s diets, drank too much, eaten processed food, ended up wrecking, ended up bloated and everything. So, and I know if I look after my gut, my mental health's okay. So that's why, no, Simproof doesn't break you fast. That's why it's really beneficial for me to just stay in a, not a calorie deficient fasted state, but in an autophagy state. So that's why I do it. And because I've got those calories in me, it doesn't put out that ghrelin, that hunger hormone, so I don't get hangry at yeah. all. No, yeah, you can't you can put not milk in bulletproof, no. You okay. can have Moving decaf pot bullet coffee. Yes, you can have decaf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A, a decaf coffee will, will help with autophagy as well. Yeah. And black coffee is the best, actually. Um, Plenish almond milk still. It's still milk. It's still almond milk. No, it's not going to work. That's I do like that brand. I think it's a great brand for almond milk, but um, can you have, have an energy intolerance to coconut milk? Yes, but it's rare. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. I have polycystic ovary syndrome. How do I lose weight? Right. So, yeah, that's a really good question. So the chances are that you will have um, insulin resistant or issues with insulin. So it's balancing those blood sugars. I mean, I think getting some tests done, let's have a look at why, what your in insulin levels are doing. Um, and then I think things like, yeah, products with chromium in as well, um, zinc. And chromium's milk, really good, you know, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, avoiding dairy because of the sort of hormonal impact, perhaps, and dairy, I think, sort of like milk can be, might be a little bit inflammatory. Making sure you eat protein each meal. Again, it's balancing those um, blood sugars. So avoiding sugar, eating healthy fats. Um, and then you've got good things that help suppress insulin. So uh, NAC, which is precursor to glutathione. And then Google as well. I would have a look um, at uh, ALA, alpha lipoic acid. So if you have a look at that, it, there's a lot of research to show um, it's a powerful antioxidant and that really helps balance insulin. Um, there's a lovely supplement called ALA Release by Allergy Research, available from NutriLink. Um, but again, I would kind of get a bit more sort of uh, practitioner support on this so that you can actually take the right supplements for you. Um, but yeah, really balancing blood sugars is absolutely key. Okay, um, no, by the way, you, you can't have wine if you're fasting. Wine has <laughs> tons of sugar in. Sauce. No, sorry guys. <laughs> no, literally, if you're fasting, you can have black coffee, herbal teas, and if you're gonna do what I do, which is like, achieving autophagy so you you do actually have the calories it's mct oil in bulletproof in 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 black coffee or you can have it with matcha like matcha tea which is a green tea you can blend it up as yeah. well but um that's it if you're gonna if you're gonna intermittent fast so coffees herbal teas water of course and that's it and i just have bulletproof coffee yeah. because i don't want to get hangry yeah, um, okay. actually about the MCT oil, so we're probably jumping to a question I think oh, at yeah. the end. I just got a question in um, sort of last minute today, and I, I think it's from you. You mentioned somebody didn't get on with MCT oil. It gave yes, hang on. That was like somebody said MCT oil is causing them cramps. And, yeah. Yeah. It can, you know. I mean, um, try just a teaspoon or half a teaspoon, but if you still find that causes problems, then actually 
no, you don't get on with it, I'm afraid. Not everyone does. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. It's because it is a great oil. I have to say, I now, I can have it, but I can't have it at breakfast. I couldn't, I can't drink Bullet Cough anymore, but that's because of my bile issues, because I can't break down that sort of fat. But I can manage to have a couple of teaspoons before a workout to give me energy. I can, I can handle that. So I think it's playing around with it. And if you really can't, then you just maybe try coconut oil instead. Is coconut oil like a weaker version of MCT? Yeah, oil? it's not going to have quite that brain boost um, because it's got um, all the different sort of component to it, components to it. Um, so you'll still get that healthy fat. You'll still get some benefit, but it's not going to be that, you know, pure um, oil that the MCT is. Someone has just said avocado oil. I don't think I put avocado oil in a coffee. That's not going to have mm. the same brain effect, is it? Because the great thing about MCT oil with the caffeine... Yeah. It's like a nootropic. It gets yeah. your brain going. It's really good. I don't think it tastes well. very nice with avocado oil, personally. But I mean, I try it like by all means. Good. Get back to me. I'll some people put D in it. Some people put D. I mean, you know, I think you've just got to try it. Um, but the whole point of MCT oil is for its immediate energy and brain boosting. But it's really the brain boosting because actually coconut oil gives you immediate energy as well. So if, you, if you're not having that and you just want to make a fatty coffee, then... Try something I mean, else. The traditional way is to put butter in it as well, but I find that's too heavy for me. Yeah. So, I, I mean, if you like the taste of it, happy days, but make sure you don't have carbs with it because you're just going to mm, store the uh, store the carbohydrates. As yeah, well. where's the best ah. place to get MCT oil? Um, you can pick it up in Holland and Barrett. Ancient yeah, I like for a lovely one. I like keto sauce. Yeah. I like a brand called Keto Sauce on Amazon. Um, and Hunter Gatherer do a really good one. And they've okay. got great holiday They're a great brand. Bovine pe peptides, because that's really good for gut health, some bovine. Mm. Okay. And they're a really good brand. Can you drink bulletproof coffee while you're getting pregnant? You know what? I would actually, I would, you, you can, but I'd just be careful of coffee full stop when you're either you're pregnant or trying to get pregnant. Um, you know, it can sometimes affect fertility. Look, I'm not saying it will, but sometimes it can. So I just, kind of either really reduce or, or sort of give it up. Um, yeah, because once you do get pregnant, it might be something you don't want to be drinking anyway. So I just, I just be careful. I'd be careful of the coffee. So it's not the bullet coffee that would be the problem. It might just be the coffee. That but you said, but you'd, you'd have, I mean, is it the coffee as in, because I'm a bit like, coffee's, if it's organic, if it's sourced from like a single source mm. farm and it's at high altitude and you've got a really exquisite coffee, like Keon coffee or something. Yeah. I mean, it's like if you've got a good wine or a cheap wine. I think it's all the caffeine. High polyphenols in. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you I can think have it's the caffeine. caffeine as well, couldn't you? Yeah, I, yeah, you can. And I think that, that would be absolute fine. It's just I think it's more the caffeine content can be an issue. Sometimes can fertility. Not always, but sometimes. So I just think, look, if you're drinking eight cups a day and you're trying to get pregnant, you know, have one cup a day. Just cut back. You might be messing with your genus. But if you already are, I mean, I'm so knackered when I'm pregnant. It's like horrific. I'm the worst pregnant person ever. So whoever's pregnant and is knackered, I sympathize with you. Just go to bed and sulk. <laughs> That's what I did and shout. <laughs> yeah. I feel shaky and nauseous when I'm intermittent fasting. Help. Yes. That's what we, we talked about earlier. Look at your blood sugars. I think your blood sugars are really low, causing the nausea. Um, so I think actually get balance moments. your blood sugars first. Eat okay. the three meals, get your, balance, your blood sugars balanced first, then try intermittent fasting. So eating three meals a day with protein, once you've balanced your blood sugars, then you can try intermittent fasting. So that's the my first step is, one. And do, can you do a test for the blood sugar? Yeah, so I mean, look, you've got, um, with, your, with your doctor, you can get sort of glucose levels. I think the HbA1c marker is a really good marker for how much sugar sort of been in your, you know, blood for... Um, you know, for sort of a couple of weeks and sort of beyond. Um, but look, if you don't have access to that, I just think, well, the chances are that if you are shaky first thing in the morning and you don't do well with intermittent fasting, chances are you do have a blood sugar imbalance. Okay. So, so first things first, maybe yeah. give you an email and find out what... Um... Yeah. Okay. Someone says she's doing all of what we're saying, but she's still fat. Okay. So when you say, obviously, I wouldn't want, I want to really look at everything so i'd want to look at your diet look at what you're eating and then i'd be looking at underlying causes so um i you know there can be all sorts so is it hormonal um have you developed a food sensitivity i do see that 
you know, um, to even sort of use, to even coffee or to even sort of feta cheese or something. Tomatoes so, or avocados or yeah. eggs. Yeah. So we want to look, the most common food intolerances, you've got gluten and dairy followed by eggs. But those are the most common ones. So sometimes it's a matter of getting those out, seeing, seeing how you go. If not, then we'd need to look, at, we'd need to look further. Um, so it's common sometimes to get, you know, develop a food intolerance and that might be preventing weight loss. So, but looking at cortisol levels we talked about, um, looking at sort of your sort of estrogen, are you detoxing that estrogen, genetic testing? So I would kind of be working with a client and I'd sort of, I, I would, you know, have a good indication of where to be looking and if we need to do some testing. Um, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's all about testing and literally knowing those pathways are just, you basically- Yeah, more information the better. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, how do you get started on a weight loss program and how do I get motivated? Well, let me sort of take you on that one. So what I, I can talk from experience. I was like four stone overweight. I was depressed. I had no energy. I had no drive, no sort of motivation to do anything. And I started biohacking just because I was going to end up on antidepressants again and flatlining. I don't like flatlining. I don't like that feeling. So I started with dedicating myself to having cold showers every morning. And this is from just lying in bed sulking in a sort of like watching hardcore daytime TV all day with just the baby near me. And um, that's how I started balancing my hormones. Then I started bulletproof coffee. Then I started reading about the keto diet. Then I started reading about the paleo diet. Then I got into DNA testing. Then I realized that I cannot possibly follow the same diet as somebody else because genetically I'm slightly different. We're all part of the human race, but we've all got a different genetic story. And that's how I started tweaking myself. Biohacking is hacking into your own personal biology so that you can achieve your optimum health how you feel, how you think, how you move, and how you sleep. Now, sleep is paramount for weight loss. So these sort, of, these these sort of. So I mean, it's all very well saying you've got the keto diet, you've got a low, you've got a low carb diet, high fat diet, you've got calorie controlled diet, you've got fruitarian, via vegetarian, uh, carnivore. But if it's not made up for your DNA, it's futile. It's futile because I mean, if you, Pippa, for example, explain about like most of Asia have a problem with lactose, don't they? Yeah. So they're they're not from an agricultural one. background. The history yeah. doesn't depict it. And don't assume that, um, you know, you're British, that you're not lactose intolerant. Look, a lot of the people I do genetic testing with are not lactose intolerant, but doesn't mean you don't get on with, you know, there are other things in dairy like casein and that can be a real problem um i am um lactose intolerant um but i've got some hungarian sort of genes um because but... you live in jersey and you've got those lovely jersey cows i mean how awful is that <laughs> well i know I, I, I don't have any milk from them so butter's okay i do eat butter grass-fed butter that's fine very low in lactose and i have ghee um but other than that i don't i don't have any dairy actually um i know i mean we're a dairy-free family so i'm a nasty okay. mother <laughs> anyway, right, listen, um, we, but yeah, we've, so, got, we've got like two minutes to go. Oh, can I, I just, just say on the DNA testing something? Yes. You know the female um, hormone um, package that you did that you got the special offer on? Yeah. I spoke to them today and they said we can relaunch it. Back on and working. If anyone wants it, it's 40% off the gin and nutrient cord test if they want to do that then um, they're doing that special offer. They're going to do that again. Yeah. Also, can you give us a special offer on your seven-day reset plan, please? Oh, of course they can. I knew you were going to ask me that. Look, times are tough at the moment. This is a tricky time, so I am happy to. So I've been um, scribbling away. Um, yeah. 50% off. So instead of £99, I'll do 50% yeah. off. And I'm going to set up the code, which I'll do after this. It's going to be capital letters. Um, Davinia 50. So that's on my seven day plan. Right. And the discount code, so it'll be £49.50. Um, and the code, I'll, I'll send it to you. The code okay. will be So this is going to be repeated 50. on my stories, guys, in an hour. Uh, it's immediately, but I'll set, yeah. we'll, we'll set up the discount codes immediately after. Yeah. 
Um, so we've got a discount code on the DNA and on your seven day reset plan. And this story will be repeated in my stories. You just press at the bottom right hand yeah. corner on live. Because yeah. we're going to get cut off. Thanks for everyone for joining us. Pippa, I will try and resume this tomorrow. We'll try and finish yeah, this off. Same time Stop. tomorrow, guys. All these Sorry. questions <laughs> to still do. All Bye, right, guys. Thank Thanks you for uh, seeing us all. And um, happy, what is it, Monday? Happy Monday. Happy Mondays, guys. <laughs> <laughs>